Hello everyone, welcome to worshiptutorials.com. My name is Bradford and in this video we're going to be walking you through, showing you, teaching you, tutorialing you through the guitar parts that we use more specifically in our playthrough of God of Revival from Bethel's newer album, Revival is in the Air. Now I say our video, our version, because typically the way we approach our electric guitar playthroughs is we assume and most likely think that you are probably the only guitar player. We think that would probably be the most helpful. Um, and so we try to capture the spirit of the song and all the parts in one thing. So we're doing the arrangement that we kind of put together, but more specifically based around the version that Bethel did on their newer album, Revival is in the Air. So we are actually doing the song in the key of D. Bethel, Brian Johnson does it originally in the key of D flat. I think that the way everything I'm hearing in the, in the song and just kind of to allow for more versatility and more dynamics on the guitar, I think playing in the key of D is better. So maybe if you are doing it in D flat, tune your guitar down a half step. Um, but this will be in the key of D, guitars and standard tuning. Today I'm using this Gretsch Black Falcon. It's, it's stock if that's important to you. And I'm using the Helix today, but we have patches available for different platforms as well. And so everything you're going to need if you get one of our patches is going to be in the patch. So you're good to go. But I'll explain as we get to each section a little bit of what I'm doing so you can replicate it if you're using a different rig as well. So the first part of the song, the first verse and part of the second verse is a real easy technique that I use all the time and I think you could actually benefit from more than just this one song. And basically as I approach each part of this song, I am going to kind of relate it to a pattern, a chord shape, a technique, a scale or whatever for you to use and you can base it around that, which will make it way easier than trying to just memorize notes. Now, you still wanna be very familiar with how it's played, but basically if it came to it, I'm playing it in D right now. If my worship leader were to say to me, hey, well, most of the time I'm the worship leader, but if my worship leader were to say to me, the guy I was playing for that day, can we do this in C instead of D? I would have to think about it for a minute and a couple of my things would change, but for the most part, all I do is just shift. I don't have to worry about open strings quite as much, uh, or if I do, I know how to manipulate those based on these shapes and all that. So the beginning of this song is you start on the G, go to the D. You're following the chord progression of the song. B minor to the A. And all I'm doing, if you were to actually play a full bar chord, G like that, B minor, A. If you wanted to do it that way, but only pluck the E string and the G string, that's what we're playing. So. I do this by just using the two fingers I need on the strings I need. And I do this a lot, I, no matter what key a song is in. It's a nice little texture to not play a full chord, but also to not play just a single note thing. It keeps things moving. And so what we're doing is we're staying on the E string and the G string for everything we're doing in this instance. Again, this is the intro verse one and part of verse two. We're gonna start with third fret of the E string and we're start with fourth fret of the G string. Now, this works at any time you're trying to play a G. If you want to strip back, you can play just this. Keep the same spacing and the same idea and slide up to your 10th fret. This comes in hand. This will be a lot easier if you know the notes on your low E string. 10th fret is a D note, and so you're going to do 10th fret on the low E and 11th on the G. Slide down to the 7th fret. In this case, we're going to be on the 7th fret on both the E and the G string. That's like a minor shape. And then slide down two frets for A which is fifth fret on the E string and sixth fret on the G string. And keep doing that through the verse. So for this particular section of the song, we are actually using a quarter note delay and an eighth delay. Now you don't really hear, I'll let you hear in a second, you don't really hear two delays, more so you hear like an emphasis, which we thought added some nice movement. So listen to this. So every other note is emphasized basically, but the most important thing is an eighth note delay because it kind of gallop, it doesn't really gallop, it kind of just pulses along. We got a big verb on this here as well. So with the verb and the delay. If 
That will carry you through the first verse and the intro and part of the second verse. The next part of the song is the pre-chorus. The only difference in the, pre, the two pre-choruses that happen in the song, I would say, is more the intensity with which you play them. I prefer to switch to the neck pickup for the first time, and then I prefer to hit the bridge pickup on the second time. It's the exact same setup, uh, effects-wise for me, at least especially in this preset, but it, it's different because the neck pickup's not going to be quite as hairy and overdriven as the bridge. But what we're going to do is base what we're playing in a pentatonic shape. You could stay there for the most part, but I prefer to kind of do a slide down to get that part. I think sliding down to those notes kind of fits a little more with what I hear, and I think it just sounds nice. Here's the part without effects. <laughs> The whole thing was on the D string, so we're gonna get, start with the ninth fret to the seventh, slide down to the fourth, here it is again, up to the seventh, to the ninth, same thing basically again. So we're using those three frets, and then we walk down from seven, five, four, two. Now you could just play that again, or you can play this pickup that I sometimes do. Which in this case would be on the G string, 7th fret, 6th fret. To the ninth fret on the D string, so. The last time through, you kind of follow the melody up by going from the seventh fret on the D string to the seventh fret on the G to the ninth fret on the G. So with all our effects, basically we got a dotted eighth delay and the eighth delay going to kind of give a more galloping. Not totally necessary, maybe just out of eighth is all you have. Maybe if you just have one delay, that's totally fine. Uh, plus to all these modelers is that you got all the options. So here's how it sounds like with all our effects. <laughs> difference between pre-chorus one and pre-chorus two, which is after verse two, is I would say just hit that bridge pickup to give it some more dynamic. I have heard, and I really don't know, but I have heard that a lot of the Bethel guys prefer to stay on their bridge. I think I've, I read something about that. So if that's the case, maybe you just want to add another overdrive if you like staying on your bridge as well. But I like swapping, give me some dynamics, give me some different sounds different flavor, different timbre in the strings even, because there's a difference between hitting a note like this and on the bridge like this. So, whatever fits what you're playing and however you think sounds best, there's really no wrong, but in this case, I'm just showing you what I do. Next is the chorus. Uh, the chorus parts, you could do exactly the same, and I totally understand that maybe playing all choruses the same, maybe a little easier. And actually, I prefer to kind of do that. If I have another guitar player, I would rather them hit the, they'd hit diamonds, they would just hit, strum it out. And then I would follow the melody, is which is basically the guitar part. But if you're the only guitar, you would probably want to do things a little different because it'd get pretty boring playing the exact same thing every single time. Not that a lot of people will probably notice, but if you're trying to do things a little different and you're trying to kind of keep some dynamics up, and also I just think this is really helpful to try to push yourself to do things a little differently. I'm gonna kind of show you what I do for the first chorus, uh, and then we'll talk about the second chorus and how slightly different they are. What we're gonna do, and if you've seen any of the videos we've posted before about my recommendation for alternate chord voicings or how I play guitar, basically, or some quick ways uh, to improve guitar right now, if you haven't seen those, you'll probably uh, wanna go check those out. But uh, if you have seen those, you're probably familiar with some of these ideas. I like to use a standard D shape to give me a higher voiced chord. In this case, uh, I use it to kind of follow 
a G and an A, and then to also play a D up past the 12th fret. So here's your D shape. On your B string, whatever note that is, is what the triad you're playing is. In this case, you got a D here, F sharp on the E string, and an A on the G string. So this is a D chord. If you slide this up, Wherever you slide that up is gonna be a major chord. And in this case, we wanna to go to a D, which would be on the eighth fret of the, of the B string. So base it right there. And we pretty much just pick this out just on the E, which will be on the seventh fret and on the B, which will be on the eighth fret. So just pick E, B, E, B. Slide up two frets, so you're uh, on the ninth fret of the E string and on the tenth fret of the B string. And then fret right underneath where you're at on the B string on the tenth fret on the E string. We're gonna go from the tenth fret, which you may wanna switch fingerings after a certain point. Just whatever feels comfortable. We're just gonna skip up a fret or two frets each time. So 10, 10 on the E and the B to the 12 and the 10 to the 14th. So. Basically we're using this B string to kind of drone a note each time, which is different than Like it keeps things moving. Now I like to follow the melody, God of Revival. So what we're gonna do is pick out the melody, God of Revival, by following it, basically arpeggiating a, or spelling out the melody using the D shape. So 15, 14, 17, 14. All right, 15, 14 on the E string. 17, 17 on the B string, 14th fret on the G string. Again. So we're gonna do that twice. Chorus one. For sounds on this one, we have a big verb, which I pretty much think we just keep on the whole entire time now that I think about it. <laughs> um, and we have the Timmy on, which has given us a little lighter overdrive. So instead of this, we have this. So a little more saturation. It really didn't add too much tonally. It just kind of gave us some more overdrive. And then we're using an eighth note delay and a dotted eighth delay, which kind of really provides some good movement. So when you add that with the big verb, we get this. So since we're here, we're going to talk about the second chorus. We'll go back to the second verse. But basically, what I just did was spelled out part of the melody you're going to be playing, the guitar part you are going to be playing for the chorus. When we get to the chorus the second time, because of all the energy and everything else going on, you're not gonna need to kind of keep that droning note on the B string. You're just basically following the melody of the song. You're gonna do like the little pickup, the darkest night, which is right here. 15, 14 on the B string to the 16th on the G string. You're gonna be kind of hitting eighth notes the whole time to kind of keep it moving. So you're gonna do it like this consistent thing right here. Stroke, stroke, like each time, the whole time. We're gonna go 15, 14 on the B string and then 16 on the G string. Walk it right back up, 14, 15 on the B string. Same notes you just played and then go to 17 on the B string, 19 on the B string, 20 on the B string, like this. And then once you get up there in the 20th fret, walk it right back down, but stop. So 20, 19, 17, 
14th on the G-string. That is also the solo. We just knocked out a whole bunch of parts all at once. So what we're doing here, every time we get to this, we're kind of adding a little bit more. So the first time through the chorus, it's a little bit different. You're kind of keeping a droning note going to kind of fill some extra space. The second time through, like we just did, we are picking out the melody by pretty much note for note on the guitar. And what we're using there is more like a medium drive, that same delay and verb combination. When we get to the solo, we're using a little bit of an octave. And that octave, at least on the Helix, doesn't do too, too much. It's not too specific, it's not too defined. It kind of just sounds like it's getting fatter. So we got, this is just without the pitch. With the pitch. Now when we get to verse two, uh, I basically play the same part. Maybe if you have two guitars, you may find that you want to keep playing the exact same thing for verse two that you did for verse one. Um, but if you're on, the only guitar, what I would say is still play that same voicing as we did, but the way you're doing this will basically ensure that your A string will get muted. And your D string will be open. So since we're playing the key of D, which this is why I like playing in D here, um, it kind of gives you a little more. So I pretty much will just strum those bottom four strings. D. B minor. Using the exact same voicings and all from verse one. But then you hear the band kicks in a little bit. And the difference there is I kind of just maybe just rake a whole chord a little bit or maybe just a little more defined chords. So what I like to do is kind of give this real nice voicing. I think I learned it from James Taylor, which is, he is like the king of voicings. That's beautiful. So basically use your first finger to bar the E, the B, and the G. And then you're gonna use your ring finger to get you that third fret on the B string, which is a, just a regular D chord but we need to play a G. So the only thing you gotta do differently is use your second finger to get the third fret to get you that G note. You got this. So I would do just chords at that point. Just let them bring out, just diamonds. Another way to do a B minor, a little more stripped back, and I think it sounds a little better. It's not as, like that's just too, I don't know, it's just too defined, it's too specific. I want it to be a little more airy and open. Basically, um, you hit your, use your first finger to get that B note on the A string, and then on the second fret, and then use your second finger on the G string on the second fret, then use your third finger on the third fret of the B string, and you're gonna be muting that D string to an A. Basically, I'm gonna keep this the whole time. I'm gonna keep this higher D note. So as my third finger just sits on that third fret on my B string, uh, I'll hit that G shape we talked about. A D shape just by not fretting basically the E string and leaving that open. B minor. And then I'll hit this A, which is using my first finger to fret on the second fret for the D, the D string and the G string, but also leaving my third finger on the third fret. It's like a, it's an A suspended. But since we've been having that D note in the whole thing, it just fits really well. It keeps these uniform sounds, which is kind of what I like to do a lot. And then you go into the pre-chorus and then the chorus, which we've already covered. That last part there was just the, the second half of the verse when everything kind of gets a little bit bigger and sounds a little more uh, full. Basically still using like our, our Timmy in this case, which is like a like our lighter drive, just kind of makes things hairy. Doesn't really make things loud and big or anything, just makes them hairier, dirtier. And a dotted eighth delay. 
to kind of fill the space in between what you're hitting and all. After you play that, you hit the pre-chorus, you hit the chorus, we've covered that. Then you go to the bridge. Basically, there's a little instrumental section where you just let, hit the one and let it ring out. You could do a, a number of things. Typically, I would say in the track, just let it ring. Um, if you're playing with a whole bunch of people and there's a lot of energy in the room, do a little, do a little something. Uh, what we do for the bridge is we get a just delay going behind us, a, a, a verb and all that, and you're gonna just follow the chord progression. I love the simplistic nature of kind of like following like the hi-hat or basically we're playing 16th notes following the chord progression. I love how that sounds. So we're gonna go following the bridge sound. B minor. A. So using the same voicing as I was talking about for verse two. Then as it builds again, I would say just kind of like rake through, arpeggiate the chords. That's the second time through. So this third time through is when we kind of pick up the intensity as we go into, the, it is the last chorus, um, at least in the way we're doing it. So I kind of just, dig in, I get a little raunchier, and I love it, because I'm really more worried about the octaves, and I'm really more worried about just getting real gnarly. So getting this, just octaves. That's it. That's uh, the last bridge. So we're hitting octaves here. Um, if you know how to make a power chord, you can do that too. But what I would prefer to do is to hit on your A string, hit the fifth fret for a D, and then hit the seventh fret on your G string for the octave. So if you do that, that's a, a D, it's just two Ds. Slide down to the second fret and fourth fret to play just the, like a two Bs. It's not really a B minor, but because of the way everything's situating, it'll totally sound like one. And then you could hit slide down here for an A, but the voicing, like you add more strings and it's a little harder to mute a string when you're only, so I come down here, use the E string on the fifth fret, and then use the seventh fret on the D string. Then you're gonna launch into the chorus riff that we've already covered. After all of that, after that build in the bridge, we go into the chorus and then there's a solo, which we've all talked about. And then the bridge again comes back around, except this time we don't hang on the one like we do the first time. So for this, uh, we're gonna use those same voicings that I talked about in the beginning. So for G, A, B minor, but we're gonna play like a C sharp. Uh, in the song, it's more of an A over C sharp, but we're gonna play just a C sharp. So take that same shape from the B minor, slide it up two frets to the ninth fret on the E string and a ninth fret on the G string. Then your D, which is on the 10th fret of the E and the 11th fret of the G. So it's gonna go G, A, B minor, C sharp minor, D, slide down to the A, We'll talk about that riff. Then you go everything all over again. C sharp minor, D, drop to the A. Before it out. And on the four. Which I like to end on that really cool voicing. So that riff, if you understand Theory, basic theory, if you understand how a scale is made up and what notes make up a scale and you understand what a walk up is and a walk down is, this riff will make a little more sense. A walk up is just simply following the notes in the order up in the scale that they go, I guess for you to be this way, right? Then we're gonna walk up or we'll walk back down. The only difference is we're skipping the A the first time. So it goes G, B, C sharp, D, C sharp, B, A, G. 
So you only hit the A on the backside. So, so we're gonna hit the third fret on the E, second fret of the A, fourth fret, fifth fret. Right back down, four, two. You can do open, G. So, I like to do open because I pull off. But I also kind of do hammer-ons. Because if you've got a lot of overdrive, you got a lot of delay and stuff, it could work. I, sometimes if you pick it individually, it kind of sounds more defined and it may sound better. If you got two guitars doing it, that's cool. If your bass player follows it, that's cool. But you're just gonna do. And for this part, this whole bridge, the only difference between my bridge sound here and the solo sound is we turn off the pitch. So we have two drives on, we have the big verb, and we have a quarter note and dotted eighth delay. You're gonna hear this. And when you're playing it in context, I'll show you as we walk up with that progression, and then when we do the riff, and then we do the progression again. We have uh, dual Line 6 power cabs in here to kind of give a better stereo feel and just because when we record we want it to feel as awesome as possible. Uh, so I was enjoying a little bit of feedback, but that's it. Uh, the song is pretty long. I would imagine that uh, if your church gets really into the idea of revival, which I think a lot of people would probably say, we now's would- Now's the time, Bradford. Now's the time. Please, revival come, Lord. Uh, it may get rowdy, so get ready. But this song is uh, kind of a little truncated to kind of maybe fit in the your set a little bit better. Um, but those are the parts you really need. Alternatively, if you're playing with two guitar players, you may find that you want to swap off, which is actually what they do in the original. I think the guys don't, both of the guys don't play lead. You listen to the parts and one guy's playing lead at one section and, and then switches the rhythm while the other guy takes over and lead. And that kind of is can be helpful if, you, if your sound guy can keep up, that's helpful for a player to not have to feel like they're doing the whole thing. And they don't have to, exactly, Brian's over there like pushing faders like that. However, um, some, some people may find that it's easier to have one person play lead, one person play rhythm. Um, if you have a rhythm player, you can kind of scale back some of the more rhythmic feeling parts that I shared. And the reason for that would be because your other guy is gonna be probably hitting bigger chords and strumming and stuff. And that gives you an opportunity to really control dynamics between the two of you. Um, and you don't have to quite worry about what you're playing as much. You can play single note stuff almost the, whole, almost the whole time. But if you're only a guitar player, once the song starts, you basically don't stop. Uh, when I play, I do get a little bit of a break in the first half of verse two and a little bit in the bridge. I have the other guitar guy play is that part of the bridge we talked about. And that gives me time to tune or kind of take a little bit of a break. But that's it. Brian, did we forget anything? You got it. We got it. Thank you so much for checking this out today. We know so many of you have been asking for more tutorials. We will try our best to keep doing that. So thank you for the support. We hope you enjoyed this one. Patches that we have available for this song are in the description below us. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.